So welcome to the first video of five regarding the research process. So in the introduction video that you may have just watched, I discussed the different steps in how you get from zero, from starting your research to actually having a completed research proposal. A research proposal that includes the purpose of your research, the context, your plan of action, the missing information that you are trying to add to your research space and a way of how you are actually going to do that. So your methods, your materials, your hypothesis and also a timeline. These are all things that you need to include within your research proposal. But to get there, there are a few steps that you need to do before. And the first of those steps is what I'm going to be talking about in today's video, which is how to find a research topic. Now, this is a very difficult one. It's something that I actually didn't have to do because when I applied for my PhD, the topic was already defined for me. And so I just applied for a specific PhD program. But I am aware that some people do have to think about their research topic and have to identify their gap in literature and have to identify the problem statement that they are looking at for their research. So within today's video, we're going to be thinking about how to find a topic, the things that you need to consider when thinking about finding a topic and things that you should put into place when doing your research and your literature review as well. So to see more from me and to follow this series for the research process, don't forget to press the subscribe button and don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know if this was helpful and don't forget to just chat down below see if anyone else can help you and I will also reply back to the comments down below as well and answer your questions if you have any also please contact me on thepagedoctor.com which is my academic business whereby I can support you and we have a team of academic consultants and editors that can support you with your writing process and with your research process as well so the first thing to look out for is the requirements. Before you even delve into a literature search, you need to know what your requirements are that have been determined for you by your university, by your supervisor, by your tutor. Now, if you have complete range, full range to do whatever you want, then that's, that's fine, you can skip this step. But for most of us, if you are someone that is a student and you're coming from a third year degree or you're coming from a master's degree or a PhD, then there will be some sort of limitations. That limitation may be the topic, it may be what sort of area you're looking at, not the specific area, but some sort of like broader area that you, you should be interested in looking at. You may be given a list of topics that you need to choose from. So then that means that you need to decide from those topics. You don't have complete option to do whatever you want. You may even have um, limitations in terms of the method that you can use. So do you have to take a quantitative approach, a qualitative approach? Are you able to recruit participants? Are you only able to do a literature search? So you're not able to actually can do any kind of new or any primary research yourself. So these are limitations that you need to consider before even thinking about the topic because there are obviously certain topics whereby you need to do your own primary research whereas there are some topics whereby you can just do a kind of conclusive search. So in terms of method you may be required to do a synthesis or only able to do a synthesis of current papers, you may have to do a case study. So firstly identify any requirements, any sort of restrictions that are upon you then you can move on to the second step. Now we are assuming that you are able to pick from any topic um, so the second thing you want to do is choose your area of research, the broad area of research. So we're going to narrow it down in a bit, but firstly you want to choose the broad area. So what is the general topic that you're interested in? Now the way that you know what general topics are would be, let's say you were to pick up a research paper that would be published in, for example, would be published in Cell and Developmental Biology. So that would be a more general topic. We're looking at cell and developmental biology. So that's a more broad topic. And within that, you have more narrow topics. Or you might be interested in neuroscience, maybe child neuroscience, maybe adult neuroscience. Um, these are more broader topics. And then after that, you'll narrow it down. Now, stick to what you know, stick to what you are comfortable with, stick to what you are learning. It wouldn't make sense for you to 
pick a history topic if you are a biology student i would, don't know why you do that but just give an example like try to stick to what you know and especially if you have any restrictions upon you then make sure you're choosing topics based on those restrictions then the third thing you want to do now you've chosen a topic is to do a bit of a i guess i'd call it a general literature search so this is not you looking for literature of a specific thing but just generally trying to read around the topic so the way i would do this is i actually would try to maybe avoid places where you have primary research papers trying to find some review papers so review papers are papers where someone a researcher has taken all the primary research papers in their topic and has summarized it in this paper and what they do is they summarize in this paper and they'll usually give a statement and they'll usually give you a little hint and this is what i always tell people to do it's a little secret by the way they usually in review papers tell you where there is missing research or missing information missing knowledge in that topic so they'll say this said this paper says this that paper says that this paper says that we are yet to understand this thing our knowledge of this thing is weak there is little like research on this thing there are so many terms there's loads of like phrases and terminology where the review paper the person that has written it will actually basically give you a topic to do your research on but you have to read a lot of review papers to get it but it is there it's there in black and white so by doing this you are able to identify whether or not the topic you have chosen has enough like information out there has enough papers whether or not it's something that you actually want to continue if you feel like mm, i don't really like this topic feel free to go backwards and find another topic and then kind of do that process again step two and step three but actually you should be able to find enough that you can continue on and try to identify um, a more niche topic do make sure that you are saving any papers as you go along maybe make a spreadsheet maybe keep the websites of the you know what you've read um, somewhere so you're able to go back and pick them um, out later on if you have two or three ideas feel free to save them on different spreadsheets and then you can take the idea to your supervisor to get approval later step four is where you are go getting more specific it's where you are taking yourself from being very broad Here's my overarching topic and you're getting more and more specific. So here is where what I mentioned earlier works really well. So you've read a few review papers around the subject and you found a few parts of that review paper where they've said, the author has said, missing information here. We don't understand this very well. This is not well defined. And usually in a good review paper, you'll find there might be three, four, five of these statements in different places and you might want to pick one of those out and say ah okay we don't understand this very well this could be something that i look into for my research and they pick that out and then you want to look into that specific topic and then do your reading and try to find whether or not it is something that you'd be interested in now to pick a niche look at research that's out there and try to figure out whether it is a topic where there's already so much that's been done. So look at the papers and say to yourself, right, there are 200 hits for this particular topic. It's going to be really difficult for me to find a good place to kind of sit, my, sit in myself. Then just leave it. If you find that there's only like 20, 30, 50 papers, something, something a bit less, then you might think to yourself, actually, there is scope here for me to actually make a difference. There is scope here for me to show and prove that what I'm doing is going to make an impact and it's actually going to make a difference. So remember that when you're writing your literature review later on, you are going to have to justify why you're doing this research. You're going to have to say, we don't know much about this topic. There's little information. It's not very well defined. It's not very well understood. If there are 300 papers on your topic, it's gonna to be hard for you to justify that. So if you pick a topic where there is only five, 10, 15, 20 papers, it's a lot easier for you to try to justify 
that what you are doing is something new and is something that you're adding to the research space. The fifth thing you want to do is think about your research method. I know it may be weird to think about your methods right now because you haven't even got approval for your topic yet, but it does help to think about the methods that you're going to be using because that is what you are going to be using in the future. So if you are choosing a topic where the only way you can do the research is if you have a lab and you have cells and you have this and that, and you know you don't have access to that, then that, that needs to go out the window. But if you, for example, choose a topic where you know that you have the resources and you know that you will be able to answer this question with the resources that you have, then that would be a question that you can keep on going with and it's a topic that would definitely work. So it definitely would be wise to think about the methods, definitely not finalizing it, definitely not thinking about it in any detail or writing anything down, but thinking about how you are going to answer this topic. Will you have the resources to do this? Is it something feasible? If not, change topic. Step number six is to determine the relevance of your topic. Now, one of the things that I always like to tell my students is that when you are determining relevance, this means that you are saying that what I'm doing is worthwhile. And now it's hard sometimes to argue about research being worthwhile to someone that doesn't care about that particular topic. But let's just think about whether or not your research is worthwhile in different scenarios. So it could be academically worthwhile, which means you're adding information to a space that is currently missing. It could be socially worthwhile, so that means that there's something happen in, happening in society and you are again adding information, you're helping society move forward. Or it could also be educationally worthwhile, so that's something where by finding this information out and by doing this research, you are adding knowledge that we can use to teach others to improve on diet, to improve on health, to improve on public health, so many different aspects that you may use this research for within education. But it may also have a practical relevance, so are you showing a new method? Are you showing a new way of doing something? And that is something that would be practically relevant. The reason why it's really important to, to, to know this and to consider this is when you write your abstract and when you write your literature review, there usually is a paragraph or a few sentences where you're writing down why this is relevant. Because essentially you're trying to convince someone else that this research is important because of this and it's relevant because of this. And if you, are not able to articulate the relevance of your research, then you are not going to be able to convince someone else. And let's imagine that you're using this research statement and you're using this research paper to get a grant or to get some money to carry on with your research. Well, if you're not convincing and if you're not saying how relevant you are and how relevant the study is, then you won't get that grant. So you do need to think about making sure that your research is relevant and it's one of those ego things I think in research sometimes you think that your research is the best research ever that's fine have an ego make sure that you're able to identify and articulate why and how your research is relevant to society and again it's one of those things that when you're choosing a topic it doesn't really matter in that moment if it's relevant but you need to think that if I don't think about it now then later on when I'm trying to say why it's relevant and I haven't thought about it before, that could be a problem then. So a lot of a lot of the tips I'm giving you today for finding a topic is sort of helping you make things easier later, helping you think about issues that may occur later that may be a problem. So when you're choosing your topic, try to choose it wisely because then when you come to write your research paper later and you come to write your abstract and your research question, you, you've thought about these things that may cause a barrier later. Number seven is making sure that your research topic and what the question is that you think you might want to answer is plausible. So is it something that you can answer and is it a question and a topic that you are able to do within the time frame that you have? Right, so you've chosen this topic, you've said, I want to look at, let's say my PhD, I want to look at cancer research and I want to study these two cell types and these two proteins and I've only got four weeks to do it. Or right, let's be realistic, I've got six months to do it. Realistically, okay, I'm not saying it can't happen, but realistically, you may not be able to achieve all of your goals and your aims 
in that short space of time. So it might be worthwhile narrowing down your topic a little bit more. So you're only allowing yourself to have enough questions that you can answer in that short space of time right so it's all about thinking ahead when this first video that I'm, I'm filming for you today is actually summarizing everything we're going to be talking about but in a video that's preemptive so you at the moment are thinking about finding a topic right so why is it important to think about why it's relevant why is it important to think about my methods well it is important because if you choose a topic that's difficult when you come to decide on the methods and you come to work out if it's relevant and you come to do a time frame you're going to struggle and a lot of the time what i find with students is when they are struggling with their topic it's just a lot easier to change topics sometimes because actually that topic is what's holding you back so if you think about these things in advance then your topic decision hopefully will mean that you don't come into these issues later on and then the last thing you need to do um, is to actually get your topic approved so once you've decided on what topic it is that you're doing you've justified it you've picked out a few papers you've thought about why it's relevant you've thought about how you may approach the you know the research you now want to get approval from whoever it is that who, who approves it for you so that may be your supervisor maybe your your academic tutor your mentor your lecturer professor you go to them and you present them with it. So make sure that you've compiled it in a, in a kind of, you know, in a nice way. It is not a full research proposal. Don't write a proposal before you've even got approval, but it is a bit of a mini proposal. Let's call it a mini proposal. <laughs> so it's a proposal where you're summarizing what the question is and what your topic is and what your hypothesis might be, what you're interested in looking at. Um, maybe put some papers together that you've looked at and you say, right, you know, here are the papers that I'm interested in and these are some papers that you know, talk about it. Maybe think about how many papers you found. So when you're talking to your supervisor, you can say, well, I found 50 papers. So I think that's quite a lot. There's a decent number of papers, but it's not too many. So I can, I can dominate, my, my research can dominate the space. And you want to think about maybe any conflicting data, anything that you think might be an issue and um, why it's relevant all of these things that i've discussed today will show your supervisor that you haven't just picked out a topic from the you know from the sky and you, you've actually thought about it you've actually thought about how you may approach it in the future that will really impress them if you sit there and you say this is my topic this is how i will do it and this is how i'm going to kind of try to meet my research aims and then what do you think and you'll most likely have a discussion they might help you tailor it a bit more may help you kind of make it a bit more refined but for the most part if you come with all your justification and all of your reasoning you probably will get it accepted i hope that helps we're going to move on to the second video where i'll talk more about identifying a research problem and finding that gap in literature um, so that will be the second video and i'll talk about it in a bit more detail so if you are in this stage and you're thinking about what to do next the next step is to find the gap in literature and the only way to do that is by reading lots of literature so that will be your homework read lots of literature but i hope you found this video helpful and as i said i'll be sa saving this in a playlist as a series for the research process so don't forget to click on that down below um, and also on the side here to see the next series of videos that will follow don't forget to subscribe to see more from me and see you in my next one